All right, hello everyone. So we're still on Plato, and uh, today we're going to talk about Plato's theory of the soul as well as his account of knowledge. So according to Plato, we all have a soul, right? All of the human things do, all the human people do. Um, this soul is, I think, is, is he equates it with like the goings on in our mind. So like a capacity of the soul is our ability to reason and comprehend things and know things and understand them, understand why. Okay. So his account of soul is that the soul was not created, right? Uh, rather, the soul has existed eternally, right? Um, has somehow, through ignorance, uh, lost its state in the immaterial wor world, in the world of ideas, and somehow entered into these bodies, right? And so part of our, um, part of our uh, coming to, uh, part of our goal is to leave this body and go reunite our soul or our mind with the immaterial world. Okay, so... Um, sounds really Eastern, right? And I think that he, in some places, Plato talks about that there's like a reincarnation element. Um, not all souls just like, um, not all souls um, go automatically go back to the, to the idea world right after death of the body, right? So in some cases, the soul will cling to a new body and it forgets everything that it knew in the previous life as soon as it takes on a body. So that's why we can't remember things from previous lives, according to Plato. So the other thing is that in the Phaedo, which we didn't read, the Phaedo comes just after the Apology. In, um, and so that's where Socrates lays out his view of death. And he thinks that death is a kind of escape. So the soul um, persists after death of the body, right? And the body is a kind of cage of the soul. So the idea here is that the goal is to get away from these bodies. If we could get away from them, we should. Uh, and we would, but we just can't until death. So, um, so the soul can be busy understanding things, looking, having new insights, doing all of these things. But sooner or later, the body is going to drag the soul back down, right? Uh, we get hungry. We have to go to the bathroom. We get sleepy, right? We got to take care of these bodies. And, uh, and a as a result, the soul cannot actualize its potential to the degree in which it would if it were disembodied. So, um, so the soul is sort of kept back from true understanding um, because of the body. Okay, so... Now we're going to look at uh, his account of knowledge versus mere opinion, or true knowledge versus mere opinion. So a natural question is, well, what is a mere opinion? So this is something that we believe, but we do not yet understand why we believe that thing, or we don't understand why it is that the thing that we believe is true. So I think a case will help illuminate uh, a, an example of a, of a mere opinion. So let's suppose that you have, you're like playing with a friend and you guys have a lot of money riding on your coin flipping. So you like flip a coin, you like catch it, do like this, and then you look at it and then you're like, oh, it's heads or oh, it's tails, right? You've done this before. We've all done this before. So let's suppose that you and your friend were, you're flipping your coin and you've got, I'm like $10 that there's heads on this, right? And you get excited, right? And before you open up your hand to look at it, to look at the coin, you form the belief that the coin is in fact on heads, right? So you're like, yes, it's heads. I believe it before looking at the coin, right? Um, now, here's, a, here's a, uh, a question is, do you know or do you yet know that the coin is on heads? without having looked at it? The intuitive answer seems to be no in that case. If you disagree with me and you think you do know that it's on heads, please send me an email 
and we should talk. Okay, so um, we would say, at least I think, that, uh, that my belief that the coin landed on heads without looking at the coin yet is not knowledge, but it's a mere opinion, right? It's a, it's a belief that I'm holding, but it does not yet count as knowledge, okay? So that's kind of this distinction here. Now, Plato thinks that um, all of the material things in the world are kind of like uh, the coin that we haven't looked at, right? So we can't actually have knowledge about anything in this world. Rather, we can only have knowledge about things that we can see with our mind's eye, with reason, right? So we can have knowledge about math. We can have knowledge about geometry, right? We can study ideal triangles and the angles of those ideal triangles, right? Perfect circles and such. We can have knowledge of maybe some claims in physics as well, right? Um, so long as they're, they're not tainted with a lot of matter, right? Talking about uh, the actual concrete stuff. And Plato's reason for thinking this is that, look, the world's always changing, right? Um, everything, that, everything that's here is just always in flux, right? And, and when things are in flux, we can't under, understand them to the same degree uh, that we can understand, say, mathematical concepts. And that's where we can come to have true knowledge, right? And he's got a point. So like some people, like are colorblind, right? And so some people say that's an orange cat and some people say it's a white cat, right? And it probably doesn't work quite like that, but still we can imagine, right? And so maybe we just like can't know about the color of the cat, right? Or somebody's blind and so it, it's called into question whether there's a cat there at all, right? So I don't think that that's true, but maybe, maybe Plato's onto something here, right? Um, but presumably all of these people can say that two plus two is four, right? Maybe we can all agree to that. Uh, maybe we can all understand that and be able to explain that. Um, so anyway, so what can we have true knowledge about? Mathematics, physics, geometry. What do we have mere opinions about? Pretty much everything else, right? So uh, things in the material world, objects, um, natural phenomenon, all of these things we can just opine about. So, okay, so today we talked about uh, Plato's theory of the soul, right? It is uh, immortal going both directions. I forgot to say that. So um, in the Christian tradition, it's the, the human soul is immortal in one direction, so it's created at a time. So for Plato, it's immortal in both directions, meaning that it's always existed. Um, and then we talked about the relationship between the soul and the body. And uh, for this slide, we talked about the nature of knowledge versus mere opinion. Anyway, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. Thank you so much.